Okay, to review where we are, we've talked about the one inch flat and the number 12 round, and in general, said that these are gonna be very adequate brushes for, in my opinion, anything from a half sheet below paper size. Now, the information I'm giving you is by all means subjective. You may have artists that disagree and uh, feel, feel that, uh, you know, that, that you could use different sets of brushes here, but going back to the traditional vein of watercolor, you'll find these commonly used two brushes uh, as far back as the uh, late 1800s on through the, the mid 1900s uh, as prominent tools in the, the artist's quiver, so to speak. If we move into a larger sheet, one of the things that I'm going to, to give you is a larger surface area brush. So let's again say we're moving from a quarter sheet or a half sheet into painting a 22 by 30 painting, similar to the one behind me. And I want you to be able to cover more surface area in a quicker amount of time because your paper may be drying. And even though we don't want to rush the watercolor process, we are up against the time factor in, in building certain washes so that the colors diffuse together. Uh, we have a certain window of opportunity, so to speak. So if, it, if it's a hot day or if you're in an air conditioned studio room, uh, our paper is drying rather quickly. We've got to cover some ground is the bottom line. So I would say we add to these two brushes a larger flat brush. Here we have I think a one and a half inch golden fleece, Cheap Joe's golden fleece, which is made of golden nylon, a textured and quite soft and pretty absorbent nylon brush. We'll talk a little bit more about the brush fibers in a later clip. And I also have a uh, two inch squirrel hair natural brush from Cheap Joe's. Uh, black squirrel. One of the tips we'll mention later as well. If you use the squirrel hair brush, it's good to pre-soak it in slightly warm water, not hot water, uh, prior to using it because squirrel hair fibers tend to be a little more brittle and break off on your uh, paper sometimes. Good reason to have a fine set of tweezers close by so that you can pick that hair out of the wash because it will uh, when it dries impact the way your uh, surface looks. So I would give you a larger flat brush. One of the other nice things about a, a large flat brush, even if you paint on a half sheet or smaller, is you can quickly saturate during the paper prep time both sides of the paper uh, in, a, in a pretty fast fashion using a much broader and, and dense brush like that. So you got the ability to cover large ge geometric shapes in a quick fashion with those additions. You would only really need one brush of this size range. Uh, I'll just put two there to give you some comparison. I'm going to also let you size up, in addition to your number 12, to a, a number, 16, uh, number 14 or 16 or 18, your choice, round brush. I can't get these to stay here, so I'm going to crisscross them. This is, a, as I mentioned earlier, number 18, which is dry, Kalinsky Sable, Dragon's Tongue. Having a larger round brush is going to enable you to maintain those organic shapes. As I mentioned earlier, the drippy pointillism. But cover more ground than the number 12. So just with the addition of a couple more brushes now, we have the ability to cover this larger surface area in an expedient fashion and get our washes down quickly. Both, both brushes really performing in the same way as the one inch flat and the number 12. One of the other fun things to do when you move up to a larger round brush is to create texture and spatter. And now you begin to look a little bit like Charles Reed, which is a lot of fun. And still have the ability with the number 18 to make a relatively tight line. Now, as you might imagine, as we go up in Kolinsky Sable size, we go up significantly in cost. So these are not inexpensive brushes. 
we'll examine the fibers uh, and the options that you have with costs in, in the next segment. Uh, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can take a minimalist approach to purchasing good quality brushes and still paint a watercolor as large as 22 by 30. So I guess the answer to our final Jeopardy question for today, in my opinion, would be five brushes. Wait, let's add a rigger. Everybody needs a rigger to make those tight, linear lines that are a little bit smaller. This is a number, uh, I can't see, I believe it's a number, number one Cheap Joe's rigger. A rigger brush, this is a sable brush that gives us the ability to make fine lines. Let me come down a little lower here and let me put this brush away. Notice I hold the rigger similar to the way I held the number 12 when I'm making tree branches. Calligraphy like marks. So with the inclusion of a rigger, I'm going to throw in on your palette just for on your in your quiver just for good measure. Um, and we'll we'll give you two rounds. We'll take this one away. A rigger one inch flat, and let's go with the two inch squirrel. Two, three, four, five. Five brushes is the magic answer.